All right, we're all here then. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, welcome everyone and call to order and we will not do the Pledge of Allegiance this evening. Um, there's nobody here for public comment period. So let's move on down to the consent agenda. The meetings from the previous minute and the appropriations. Do I hear a motion? This is Mark Berner, so moved. Okay. Darren Hahn, second. Okay, then moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. I'll go down the list. I've got, I move your names around every time. So just listen and we'll go through. Uh, Keith Wessel? Yes. Larry? Yes. Mark Berner? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Mark Berner? Yes. Chris Thomas? Yes. Okay, thank you. Motion carries 6 0. No business, so let's move on down to the new business. The USD 417 various, re various request by Aaron Bodie. There, he's on. Aaron, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you, Nick. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Good. All right. Show, show's yours. You have the floor. All right, thanks. Well, um, we are requesting a variance for the 30 foot setback on the easement along Highway 177 or South Neostro Street there um, for the reasons that we outlined there in the proposal that I sent in. Um, mainly, we need to, several reasons. One, we need to fence in that entire area for access control in order to host um, Keisha Regional Track Meets. That's one of the requirements they have. Since that is a performance field out there, that's where we'll throw the javelin during those times. It has to be fenced in to control crowd access, um, not only for gate and entry fees for them to charge, but also for safety reasons. Um, so that, that's one reason. The other reason is controlling access for when kids are out there on the football field practicing. Um, with that being a busy highway, it's just a big fear of mine is when, um, you know, a kid's running an out route on a football and he misses it and he goes running out the street after a ball or a punt is shanked and it goes sideways and it goes out the street, you know, Kid running out could be everybody's worst nightmare there. And then the other aspect of it, Jay tells me, um, is that they've had to start several years ago on game nights going down and flagging off that whole area because of people would pull up there and park there on the side when the stadium lot was full so they didn't have to walk further. So he goes out every night for a game night and flags all that off and then has to go and pick it all up. So it kind of kills several birds with one stone wanting to fence that off. We've actually put that as part of our um, project quote with Hellas to come in and do that project and for that fencing. So we started digging into the weeds of it, that 30 foot setback, James did a great job. He came down and walked through it with me and measured it all off. Um, that would actually set it about a foot into the practice field sideline. And so obviously that, that wouldn't work. We'd have to move the practice field all to the side. And so I'm visiting with a coach and the athletic director and um, that creates some concerns for spacing and practice and so forth, because obviously with sports, when you practice, spacing is a big thing of, as far as understanding where kids are supposed to be when they line up and, and uh, doing the different aspects of play calling and, and special teams and so forth. So that's why I came in the aspect of, well, I wonder if we could request, you know, to get that fence closer to where it still provides a safety barrier, but at the same time serves the purposes we need. So I, I uh, called utility companies to make sure there was any problems with them talk to that most they don't have a gas line going down that side of the street it's on the other it's on the west side of the street um, the only utility running down through there underground is the city water line which i marked in blue and then uh, i talked to evergy and they have no problems with us putting a fence on either side of their poles as long as we have access or they have access um, which is not a problem because we'll have gated access for big trucks to get into there um, so obviously with the city too, if they would need to do some repairs on a water line, they would have access to the, the water line. And then uh, we'd also would cut out around the fire hydrant there, whatever necessary distance is required by the fire department to make sure they have access to that hydrant. So we don't have to worry about a gate there. And, and if there's an emergency where they need that, they have to worry about finding a key or if they have a key, you know, just taking that out of the the equation I think is best. So we would horseshoe around the fire hydrant there so it's not fenced in. Um, so that still provides about 11 to 12 foot um, distance from the curb. And so it, being able to do that would solve all those issues that we 
uh, listed out there in our request for the variance that we sent in prior to this meeting. Okay. Do I hear any conversation about this? Mayor, this is Larry Sigrist. I would like to ask Aaron uh, a little more information about this and explain something to him. Sure. Okay. First off, there is no setback. What you're talking about is, would be the road right of way. It's not okay. a setback. It is not 417 property. Correct. It's utility. Okay. Like okay. So, okay. That being said, you're not actually asking for a variance because there's no ordinances that regulate that. What you're asking is the city to allow you to put a fence up on the road right of way, which under normal circumstances, I don't think there would be a problem. Uh, Mr. Iverson could get involved in this, but this being a state highway, the distance away from the curb, we would probably have to get the input from uh, Joe Pallack with KDOT is the only thing I'm saying that and make sure that the fire department's happy with the uh, hydrant. But it, it's not a variance to an ordinance we have. You're asking to put it on property that is not yours. Okay. Thanks for the explanation. Okay. Yeah, uh, I was going off when James told me, he said that was utility I, right away. So that's where I was confused on. So I yeah. apologize. Yeah, well, no, that's fine. That's fine. This this has been a long standing conf confusion. And in most cases, uh, it wouldn't have a major bearing other than the fact this is not a city street, it is a state highway. So KDOT gives us home rule on signs, but they don't say anything about home rule on structures next to the highway. Okay. So my suggestion is, you know, I, I see no problem in it personally, but my suggestion is is to check with Joe Pallack with KDOT okay. and make sure that that's fine. And I can do that. Go ahead. Oh, okay. yes. I was going to say, could you repeat his last name for me, Larry? Joe who? Pallack. I think it's P-A-L-A-C. P-A-L-I-C. I see. Okay. okay. And, yeah. And Aaron, and Aaron, Aaron, I can contact him. I have his contact. I talked to him quite a bit. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank yeah. You. That you know, if it was a sign, the city has the city has to say so on signs, but not on structures. Okay. Now that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Thanks for explaining but, that. But other it. other than that, no, I see no problem in it. And you know, you see the idea that. Uh, it's not a setback, which would be an ordinance thing like planning and zoning. That isn't the yeah. case. It's, a, it's the right of way line that the uh, highway department has for that highway. Okay. No, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for but that, that'd yeah. be the only thing I would suggest, Aaron. Okay. So, just just okay, check yeah. with Joe Pallack and make sure there's not an issue with KDOT having the, what'd you say, 11 foot? 12 inches away from the curb. Okay, perfect. All right, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I personally, with a city, don't see a problem with it, but since it is a state highway, they should be contacted first. Okay, yeah, absolutely, that makes sense. I would like to say maybe we could approve this pending approval from Joe Pallack or the state. Could we do that? Would uh, you all think consider that? Oh, okay, Mayor. Yes. There is one thing, and I'd like Mr. Iverson to address it. Now that the fence is going to be put up, hopefully all all things working out, it's going to belong to the school district 417 on property the city is responsible for. Now, should there be something in writing on this, it's the maintenance and uh, if the city has to get in there or anything and the fence gets damaged or whatever, since it's actually building a fence on somebody else's property. I understand. That's, is Steve on? Steve Iverson? Yeah, I, I'm here. Um, good, good. I'm sorry I didn't ask you earlier. 
Okay, so your question is, is that since it's still, it's not, it's not exactly city property. I mean, that's really you're getting into the state. Um, well, I don't know. See, I don't know. Does the city own the road right of way or not? I, um, I don't think they do. do they? That would be a state right of way, right? right. Yes. It, it's, uh, Okay, that was my question is, but it is not school district property. It is someone else's property. Um, we could have a short agreement that just states that, that it's, their, it's their job to maintain all structures within this, in this particular instance. Um, but and there's no liability if they have to, if it has to be removed or torn down to work on utilities. No, because they're going over the top of those. So that's the reason why we keep things out of the utility. So it's gonna to have to be on on the landowner who's who's doing this. Um, but that's also gonna be something that's gonna to have to be cleared by the state. Okay, this is, that's what I was saying. Since it's a property issue, not a setback issue, I would think that ought to be some kind of a little agreement written up about it. Sure. Yeah, and I would fully anticipate that, Larry, because that's one thing James did talk about, you know, obviously with it being in that utility right away or whatever, whatever the lack of a better term of that is, is that yeah, right. <laughs> that obviously, you'd have to, you know, that would be on us if, if something went wrong with, you know, let's say uh, where the water line crosses underneath there up there on the north end, you know, if that fence had to be taken out to repair that water line, well, that'd be on us because obviously it's going over the utility right away. So that and that it's that makes perfect sense and i fully anticipated that and i wouldn't have a problem signing any sort of agreement like that yeah. saying that we understand that's that's on yeah. us yeah. And, so that, yeah and that would be a yep. good thing for nick to talk to joe you know how they want to handle yeah. that and i'll talk to joe and so nick nick can check all into all that and <clears throat> get approval i mean i can't understand why they wouldn't approve it but you know uh and that way they could go ahead and move forward if we do it contingent upon Yes, we we meet the city's or the state requirement. Is that would you guys like well, to do? Contingent upon uh, the school district signing the document. Right. Yes. Yep. And, and yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's great with me. I've got yeah. a good relationship with Joe Powell. Um, we can help, Aaron. If you have any questions or or pushback or anything, um, help you with that permitting process. It's not very difficult. And yeah, I'm going to give him a call, Steve, tomorrow. Um, and I'll talk to him, and then if I need anything from Aaron, I'll let Aaron know. Oh, you need him, and you can call Steve. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. okay. So can I hear a motion about that? I would make a motion. This is Larry Sigrist that the city approve the request of District 417 to fence in the west side of the practice field along the east side of South Neosho Street pending the approval by KDOT and agreement as to responsibility of the fence. Okay, do I hear a second? I'll second it. Okay, Keith, okay. It's been moved and seconded uh, to approve the 417th request provided uh, uh, to build a fence on the Old Street Street along the east side. I'm not going to go into all of that, but we all know what he's just said. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, contingent upon that. Uh, all those in favor. And now we're going to go down to Keith Wessel. Yes. Larry? Yes. Mark Berner? Yes. Sharon Hahn? Yes. Mark Brooks? I abstain. Okay, Chris? Yes. Okay, motion carries five to zero, six to zero with one abstention. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, guys. And I'll sure. get with you tomorrow. Nick, let me know. Sounds good. All right, That's thank you all. Have a good evening. Yeah, you too. Sounds like a good idea. Thank you. Okay, um, next we're going to go to the City Lake. Committee recommendation for I-22A cap extension. Okay, James and the committee, Keith and Mark Werner, uh, met out there last week 
um, to look at this. And the recommendation is the council approve an in-cap extension request for 177 feet for construction of a garage. And Keith and Mark, you guys can kind of chime in um, with, with that. Keith and Mark, any one of you have anything to say additional? Uh, there was plenty of adequate room to do this, and we actually were there and present talked with the, one of the neighbors, and they all have signed off, and nobody seems to have any issues with it. Um, and it is a large open area of commons area, so there's plenty of room without Im impeding on anybody. Um, that's about all I, it's no issues that, that we could see. Okay. Plenty of dialogue with uh, the adjacent owner that it would affect. He had no problem with it. The only difference with this one to most is that it's quite a large square footage, but looking at the lot, uh, okay. in order for him to build where he wants, build in the right spot, he really needs to come up that high to do it. It's fairly, uh, you know, um, it's a fairly good drop off until you get up on top of the commons right there. So it, what he's asking for is completely, uh, completely understandable. Okay, good. Okay, would somebody like to make a motion to accept that? So I just have a question. So how much is he asking for for the extension? I 177 feet. It's on page. Um... Okay. Page five. Okay, thank you. I kind of went past that before. Okay. Yep. On the, on the layout there, you can see that he has some lateral lines right uh, to the, I guess it'd be the west of where he wants to build. So he has to get beyond the lateral lines and then it inclines up to kind of a flatter area where, where he could actually yeah. build something. Okay. 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 And they realize there's going to be a fee for that. I mean, it's going to add to their yeah. lease, right? Yeah, I got work. Okay. All right, any other thoughts or questions? Do I hear a motion? Can they hear me? Mm -hmm. So move. That key? Yep. Yes. Okay. Second, Chris. Okay, moved and seconded to approve the recommendation from the light committee for 177 foot uh, cap extension for I-22A. All those in favor? Here we go again. Keith Wessel? Yes. Larry Segrit? Yes. Mr. Berner? Yes. Sharon Hahn? Yes. Mark Brooks? Yes. Chris Thomas? Yes. Okay, motion carried 6 0. Thank you. Okay, uh, now we have a variance request uh, from the light committee for F3. Same thing, Keith and Mark met with James out there. Um, and what Bill and Terry Schrader of F3 are requesting in, is being recommended by the committee is uh, for a 15 foot uh, variance uh, for construction of a deck. And you guys didn't see any problem with that? Anybody? Anybody? I didn't yeah. see any problem with that. Take it more. Go ahead. Yeah, I didn't see any problem with what they were asking for. Again, uh, we have already uh, approved variances or requests like this in the past, and what they're asking for is uh, visually understandable that what they're doing is kind of what needs to be done, and neither of their um, neighbors on each side would be affected by this. And I believe there are probably letters to that effect with the packet that you have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I hear a motion? This is Mark Berner, so moved. Okay, second. Sharon Hahn, I Where? second. Okay. It's been moved to second to approve the uh, variance for F3 as recommended by the Lake City Lake Committee. All those in favor? We'll start again. Keith Wessel? Yes. Larry Segrist? 
Yes. Mark Werner? Yes. Karen Ha? Yes. Mark Brooks? Yes. Chris Thomas? Yes. Okay, motion carries 6 0. Okay, uh, moving forward, we're going to next the streets and parks recommendation for the Sea Cliff Highway 177.56. So last week I talked to Mark and Keith, who are the committee members. Um, we have opened the letting um, bids. It's been probably three weeks ago, and we just got together and talked about this. Um, Brady has from BG, Con BG Consultants um, gave us an estimated price at four hundred ninety thousand two hundred eighty-seven dollars. Um, the bids came back considerably higher than that. Um, according to Brady, that's kind of the norm here lately with the pandemic going on and then a lot of those companies being full of work. Um, so I talked to Keith and Larry about, and also um, BG Consultants about re-letting it um, in August. And that's kind of the recommendation we're making today is to re-let it to see if we can get that cost down a little bit um, and kind of go from there with it. Okay. And the, the bids, so you guys are aware, the bids came back. Um, ceiling construction was 621000 APAC was 561000 and then Bettis construction was 608000 and the, the estimated cost was 490. Mm -hmm. Also not included in that price is the engineering cost, which is another 35 or 40,000. So the city, the city would be on the hook for roughly $290,000 if we go with these bids. I think at this, this time of, of uh, with our sales taxes possibly taking, they're probably taking a pretty good hit and uh, I, it would probably be a good time to be prudent and wait a little bit. Do you all agree? Yeah, we can relet it in August. Relet it in August. Um, the other option is say that in August um, the bids come back high again. What we can do is redo what we're bidding on. Um, this KDOT allows you three hundred thousand dollars for the project, the total project. We can split it out and do like one seventy-seven this year and then fifty-six next year. And then we got three hundred thousand dollars towards each of those highways. If the, if the August letting doesn't work out, if the August let, okay. So that's another option we could do. Anybody have any questions or thoughts about that? I do have a question. If we yes. let them out in, if we let it out in August, when would be the projected uh, construction time? It would be like the middle middle of fall. Um, is what Ray, Ray Uber is predicting. Okay. okay. I probably need to have a motion to yeah to relet it in August. If somebody wants to do that. Mayor, member. This is Larry Sigrist. Yes. During our discussions over this area, I wanted the rest of the council to be aware. We had also discussed the fact, since we're delaying this chip and seal again, that the lines and striping on the streets would need to be redone. Yeah, we're working on. I talked to Jeff Barbo. Yeah, yeah. That I wanted. I wanted to make sure all the council knew that that was part of our delaying. Nick. Yeah. So, um, actually, on the bridge, I talked to him today. Instead of painting the bridge because the paint doesn't stay very well over there, we're going to. Mm -hmm. There's reflective things that you glue down with tar. We're going to buy yeah. some of those over there, so that way we don't have to keep repainting it. Right. So we're going to we're going to work on that here pretty soon once he gets those ordered. Yeah, I was afraid maybe some of them would be worried since we're delaying it another six months that they might be concerned over that particular issue. Is the only reason I brought it up. Yep, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You noticed last week we're fading again already. So yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Any other concerns about that? Okay. Does somebody want to make a motion? Is that dog making a motion? <laughs> I'll make a motion that we relet the bids in August for the chip and seal project. CQ project for 177 and 56. Okay, thank you, Keith. Do I hear a second? 
Larry Sigrist, yeah, I will second. second it. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to go down and bid it. Uh, bidding. We're going to go down and vote again. Larry, uh, let's start with Keith Wessel again. Yes. Larry Segrist. Yes. Mark Verner. Yes. Sharon Hahn. Yes. Mark Brooks. Yes. Chris Thomas. Yes. Okay. Motion carries six zero. Okay, we're ready for the Blue Cross Blue Shield health insurance renewal. Nick. Okay. So originally I sent you guys some numbers, um, and they were wrong from Blue Cross Blue Shield. And so they've been the numbers have been fixed. That's part of the reason we didn't do this on the last agenda. Um, anyways, the cost starting June 1 for health insurance per month is $28,486. Um, the premiums increased on health insurance by 11.16%. According to our uh, agent for Blue Cross Blue Shield. It was predicated on the Supreme Court case regarding Obamacare and if the government was going to pay the health insurance providers for that. Um, I think if people, if you guys read the news, the Supreme Court ruled that the health insurance providers would get paid. I followed up with my guy from Blue Cross Blue Shield, and Blue Cross Blue Shield at this time has not done anything regarding that. So we're still stuck with the 11.16%. Um, so with that, we budgeted 321,000. Um, our total cost for the year is going to be 340,81032. Um, with the, the insurance, we pay 8% of the spouse and family, and we get reimbursed the 20% out of employees' paychecks per pay period. Um, so we'll recoup 440,000, dollars which brings our total down to 296,224.27. Okay. I said a lot of stuff, so yeah. you guys have questions, please ask. Has everybody had a chance to study this? We're within the budget, what we budgeted. Does anybody have any concerns about it? Do we want to go ahead and approve it? Um, it needs to be done. June 1st is the renewal, so yeah. we, need, we need it approved today so yeah. they can do all the work. Yeah, we need to get it done today. And I did look at other health insurance providers. Um, and for some reason, Blue Cross Blue Shield is always just a little bit cheaper than them and has way better insurance. Um, I checked on state health insurance. I stepped up, checked on pool health insurance. Um, with the state um, and all that stuff was higher and the insurance for what you're paying for cost the same, but it was worse insurance. So if I could, if I could say something, um, I really think the council needs to look at, um, at this because we're continually uh, robbing from the one cent sales tax to pay the benefits of our employees um i think we need to find find another way of either having our employees pay a greater percentage but i feel like uh and i know there were several councilmen that agreed that they didn't like how we were drawing from that one percent uh taken away from the sales tax grant so that's just my opinion yeah we've talked about uh nick and i have talked about next year when it comes time to this year, but, well, this year when yeah. it comes time to doing our budget, uh, that we need to really study the health insurance and do it. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe make some changes. Um, yeah, uh, this is Chris and uh, Mayor. I'll echo what Mark said, and then I think again. I, um, I mean, th this is coming up. If I'm understanding right, against June, and and we probably need to get it done, but. We're handcuffed with these increases, and um, you know, hard decisions will have to be made. If it's, I don't know, Nick, you're, if it's out to a RFP or competitive bids, which it sounds like you've done, and I don't see that honestly um, being a lot of savings or getting you to another partner who's going to continually raise rates. Um, you know, and if, again, so I, I like I said, I, in, and bringing from another um, budget line or, or ways to get to this uh, amount. I just think, like I said, some hard decisions will have to be made or at least looked at on, on how to keep this from just being a rising cost every single year. I echo that as well. And have had multiple conversations with uh, Mayor Debbie and Nick 
in those regards. And I think everybody's in agreement. We need to get a head start on it for next year and really explore some options. Yeah, it's, it, we, we'll all remember that. Yeah, for sure, we have to all remember that. So, with that in mind, I I do make a motion that we approve uh, the health insurance renewal at this time and and explore our options for next year. Okay. And, and this is Chris. I will second, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the Blue Cross Blue Shield health insurance renewal for this year. All those in favor? And here we go. Keith Wessel. Yes. Larry Segrist. Yes. Mark Bergner. Yeah. Sharon Hahn. Yes. Mark Brooks. Yes. Chris Thomas. Yes. Okay. Motion carries six zero. All right. Employee reinsured. Okay. Uh, next. <clears throat> the thing we've all been looking forward to, the Recreation Advisory Board's recommendation and discussion for the sports and the swimming pool for this year on pages 26 to 39 of your packet if you need information. I trust you've all looked and seen, you all know the guidelines that the governor and our local health health uh, committee have have put forth. Um, and we have Justin's here to talk to us about it. Yeah, we met just a little background. We met yesterday, the advisory board, the mayor and I met yesterday and Justin discussing this. Um, Justin has found out some new information since the meeting yesterday from some conversations he's had with other rec directors and some conference calls he's been on. So I'll let him speak to those things. Okay, I'll try to sum this up as quickly as I possibly can um, on the softball and baseball end of things. Um, and what I did was some research on area communities and area leagues that are relatively close to us in proximity. And to the north of us, I contacted Wamigo. The league that they are in um, has been canceled, um, which is Wamigo, Omega, St. Mary's, Rossville, Silver Lake. They canceled both baseball and softball to the east of us. Uh, which I had mentioned in the document that's on your council uh, council notes, Auburn, Appanoose, Carbondale, Harvillville, and all of those. Um, to the southeast, Devore and Burlington are nearing a decision of canceling both. And then the Cottonwood Valley League, as of today, when I visited with three of their directors, they are pending to start extremely late um, with the initial thought that if the stay-at-home order gets um, extended, that they will cancel their season. Um, I did reach out to Harrington last night um, with the softball situation, and um, currently the baseball league is canceled, but softball is still continuing to go. But I reached out to their director last night, and he made it a public announcement to his community that they are not going to participate in the softball league because baseball is not playing. I visited with Chapman, who's also in this situation, and she is kind of waiting on the decisions coming from us, but she's leaning um, leaning towards not participating. Um, Abilene is hearing some very negative things from their parents because the girls get to play and the boys don't. Um, she did hear from uh, four or five sets of parents that have both genders in the household and that they were uh, seriously considering pulling their daughter out because it's not fair that both their kids can, cannot play. Um, so that's kind of where we're at on that. I also did some more research on what it would take um, if we were to start after the stay-at-home order was um, over with after uh, the 18th, and I'll open our fields up on the 19th if that is something that we've decided to do. And with the recommendation. And with the recommendation of uh, the health officer. And what I did was is contacted uh, numerous other rec departments. Um, I'm on an email and a call list with 80 to 100 other uh, directors and pool managers. And essentially what the requirements are by KRPA, which is Kansas Parks and Recreation, and the CDC um, is recommending that during this time that we are in phase two, from May 19th to June 1, that any shared equipment by our uh, children on the facility, that everyone is required after every single use that that be cleaned and sanitized with appropriate materials. 
So in doing so, I went out and reached out to three different suppliers I've used since I've been here. And every single one of them is saying the same things that anywhere from 30 to 45, possibly 60 days of the delivery date to get those uh, required um, materials back to us because of that. Um, um, the also the other thing that kind of concerned me too is beings that in the phase two portion of things is they are going to be on city facilities um, on May 19th. There's a right now there is a 30 max with six foot social distancing, and that's actually per complex. So with our three field complex, the KRPA recommended that close proximity for complexes are not 30 per field, but actually 30 per complex. So that would mean that maybe one or two teams maybe could practice on the 19th. And the other thing that concerned me as well is most practices occur from 6 to 9 p.m. Who would be responsible for monitoring the size of that? And would we require the use of um, masks because they're on a city facility? Um, the other thing is, are we going to open the restrooms for them? Are we going to? And I know that I talked to uh, multiple directors and they are going, if they're going to move forward, they're going to require their staff to go in there and disinfect or give the coaches, if they can find disinfectant, to make them disinfect before they go into the fields and after they go into the fields touching high traffic areas. Plus, then he also talking about whether or not we open the bathrooms at that time and when do they get disinfected. Um, um, Currently, with all that stuff and the hoops that we have to jump through and the fact that when I did a count of all of the teams that could possibly pull out and that have already pulled out, um, the size of the league for the girls softball side is going to be very, very minimal. And I just don't know if it's something that, and the fact that the boys don't get a play, I don't feel like it's something that we should jump into. I do have a ton of contingency plans working with the softball coach, high school softball coach, baseball coach, area people that I'm aware of um, to bring in camps, clinics, scrimmages. They've, we've already talked to Adeline and Chapman as far as having uh, games well beyond the use of all these chemicals and cleanings and, and those type of things. So there are plans in place to give as much baseball and softball as we can to these kids, but at this point, it's going to be very, very difficult to keep everyone clean, safe, safe, and disinfecting helmets and bats and everything else after every single use. So that's that's what I've got rolling forward that came up basically in the last 24 hours um, from the meeting that I had with the two council members and the mayor and Nick. I'd kind of like to hear from all of you as to what you what you your concerns and your thoughts on this because um i don't know about you all but i'm getting lots of questions from the public and i'm sure that we'll be getting a lot more so um let's just start kind of go down the line keith what have you heard what are your thoughts i have not been contacted by anybody i studied this at pretty great lengths last night and I shared my concerns in a, an email this morning, and I would be glad to go over my concerns if everybody wants to bear with me. Um, but I feel like we've been blessed with extremely good numbers in our community overall. And I think the fact we've had no deaths, this says that we've had great leadership, I think, in our from our experts in the medical field and great cooperation from our citizens. But number two, my point is the virus has not gone away, nor do we have a vaccine. We have no history to draw from, and essentially we're making history on a day-to-day -day basis as we learn more about the virus. Number three, time's the only thing we can count on that'll help us with solid decisions as to what works for the essential goal of reopening the country. Businesses, to me, are a top priority to get people back to work as soon as we can safely do that. Number four, after reviewing the essential criteria for the pool and organized sports to safely resume, it's not practical to me. It's impossible to control and would create a major hardship for those that are responsible for the enforcement. 
uh, that requirement alone is a responsibility I think we have to take very seriously as a city because of the legalities that might stem as this all plays out. Number five, the other issue is finances. Um, the state of Kansas has already projected a $653 million deficit in sales tax by June of 2021. Our numbers are roughly two months in arrears, and we will be seeing the results of our community being down very soon. Uh, the pool is not paid for, and the sales tax revenues are also necessary to pay the bonds as well as to operate it. We're currently having the pool painted to protect the investment made by the community, and I think it's not financially feasible to open for a short season that we all know the pool is an expense we cannot even begin to offset with these restrictions. As I look at the overall situation, I feel we again have been blessed as a city. We've gone this far into this virus. We've not had to do any layoffs. We have not cut benefits or have had to have emergency meetings to adjust expenses on our budget. This has been a reality in many communities, but again, we're not over it. We must be cautious with funds and realize that we have other issues that we're currently facing that may require unexpected expenses, such as the threat of blue-green algae in our water source. In closing this, I'd love to see all of our activities that we have in this community resume, but I will not support opening these facilities until it's safe to do so. The risk does not warrant any gain to me at this point. Nobody wants to make unpopular decisions, but I challenge everybody to ask yourself a real simple question. If this virus mortality rates were reversed and this disease was killing young people in large numbers, would we even be having this conversation? One season of recreation is not worth losing one life, regardless of the age or additional cases. Let's please err on the side of caution and I think we'll get through this summer. That's what I got. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your concerns. Larry Segrist? Yes, uh, I agree with Councilman Wessel that the very most the city should not exceed any of the phasing operations that are set in place by the county health officer and the governor of the state. And at this point in time, if anything changes when you get to phase two, then you won't progress. So time is something I would agree with. I would still think we should keep in mind considering if the phases progress like we would hope it would to reconsider these openings at a future date. Right now, the maintenance on the pool is behind schedule. It's not going to be anything that's going to be completed soon. So I think time is on our side, especially right now. All right, thank you. Mark Berner? I uh, think that uh, Keith has done an excellent job of researching this and putting his thoughts together, and I would concur with pretty much everything he said. Um, along with that, I would just encourage us to um, utilize our county health department and, you know, use them as a, a large portion of what we base our decision making on this going forward. There are still so many unknowns with what the after effects of um, what's already happened will be that, that we just have to wait and see what will happen. And I would really agree with Keith that the most important part of every, any decision that we make has to be our downtown businesses and other businesses around that need to get back to work and Anything that would be a setback to that would be, um, I think, a catastrophe for them as well as the city. Okay. Um, we're ready for you, Sharon. Huh? Well, I would just say that I've heard from a couple of parents. Um, and um, the biggest thing I heard from them is, yes, the concern, uh, everything that, that, that Keith has, has suggested. And thank you, Keith. Well said. Um, 
you know, there's one parent said, well, you know, we, we'd sure like to have it open because it gives the kids something to do in the summertime. But they also agreed that the risk is not as important as having something to do too. So um, I just, I agree with what's been said so far. I think we, uh, we don't know enough to, to um, take the risk. And, and what I'm hearing too, it's interestingly, is that the Midwest, us, haven't seen the worst yet that from some of the projections. We hope that's not true, but we don't know. And um, we need the time to find out. So, um, and I also uh, commend um, uh, the, the Recreation Commission and trying to uh, come up with some other alternatives for the kids a little bit later in the summer when we can find a way to do it in a safe way. Um, you know, that maybe will make up for some of the myths of the, uh, some of the, the ball games as well as the swimming. So I think we need to just wait and see. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Uh, Mark Brooks. Well, I, uh, I understand the dangers of all of this and everything that's been said. Um, in the meeting the other day, I was adamant that I think we should just follow the governor's plan and uh, not go beyond what, what's being uh, handed down. Uh, I think, though, that we should plan uh, for the possibilities of opening up. Because if we don't, we're going to be, if, if things open up, the numbers start looking great, um, we, don't have, we don't have a game plan. So I think we need to plan for the possibility, but listen to our medical professionals, listen to the governor's opening plan, and, uh, and just see how things go. I think it's too early to go ahead and say yes or no, but I think we need to possibly plan for the, the option of being able to open up because at some point we have to open up um, and, and, the, and the medical professionals will eventually, the governor and along with all the staff will say, you know, we, will, we need to open up. So that's my thoughts. Okay, thank you. And Chris Thomas. Yeah, nice going last. Uh, I can just echo the comments. I will say, uh, I think Councilman Wessel again, I mean, hit on some key points there about um, just the unknown and the risk or if something was to happen. Um, I don't think that can happen. I think Councilman Brooks is right on as well, too. I mean, we don't, no, no reason or no thought to overreach, follow what the um, state and the, the county guidelines are. And, um, I don't really have anything else to add. Like I said, it's not an easy decision, I think, but um, we have to be safe and smart. Okay, very good. Well, um, what I'm, I'm hearing is that we we are all concerned, which we all know we are. You know what? For the safety of our community, we're also concerned about our options when it comes to opening up. Where you know we don't we don't have enough knowledge yet to do what we need you know to, it's it's hard to make a decision because we don't have proper we well, can't foresee the future and i, I spoke to Kendra today with morse county health office and they're still waiting for the complete list of guidelines from the cdc pool so justin got some of the guidelines but that's just a portion of them there's another a whole other grouping that they haven't even released yet um and kind of what she said is that for the Morris County Health Officer and her to recommend moving up a phase or opening the pool, we would have to be able to show um, a detailed outline of how we're going to implement all these things that's required by the CDC um, and make sure we have all the equipment and masks and sprays and hand sanitizer. So, um, so that's kind of where they're at with it. I uh, have a question to ask, and Justin, you're probably the best one to ask about this. I thought about this earlier, talking to some other people uh, about some other things that are similar. Um, how many people, I mean, is it, will this affect jobs? I mean, I know it's gonna affect seasonal summertime health. We're not gonna, if we do not open, then we are definitely not gonna hire teenagers to correct to rec, referee or right. we help with the fields or any of that. 
Yeah, I, I haven't talked to uh, Nick yet. I do have um, one young man that would like to do an internship this summer, so he can graduate in December, and him and I haven't discussed that yet. But currently, we had 40-some uh, applications for uh, lifeguards, concession stand workers, some of seasonal employees, referees, and those type of things. Um, I have heard back from probably 10 to 15 of them that have secured other positions because of the unknown, mm -hmm. uh, not whether or not they're going to have a position. And there are some of them that are still kind of holding out hope that there is going to be something offered. But when they have contacted me and asked my opinion, I said, honestly, guys, I care about you. I don't want to hold you back. If you have an opportunity to get a position somewhere else, by all means, go get one. Um, I don't know how to say this. I don't want you to take this wrong, but. What about you and what is that going to do? You know, or what is that going? What are you going to do? Well, the, the planning part, like what Mark Brooks was talking about. So it's, there's going to be a, if you're going to come up with a plan to open, it's got to be detailed. Um, you know, and he's taking care of mowing. He's mowing. Oh, I know that you mow, and I'm not so concerned about it. Yeah, and I know there's kind of, that's a, right. yeah. things yeah. you have to do in the off season. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We actually have one of those. One of those to do lists that we have, uh, you know, I can honestly, I have to continually admit that I've put off. So there are a lot of projects that I would like to work on in the off season. If there is no actual official season that begins June 15th or something like that, there is a lot of projects that need to be taken care of. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, can I ask that, Mayor? Yes. Um, there's, there's, there's maintenance that needs to be done on all the ball fields. Dugouts need to be worked on. So there, there's ample things for Justin and his and and if he wants to hire some summer seasonal to help, I think there's plenty to do. And one one thing I'll add on this swimming pool thing is is we are behind on getting it painted, so we're probably 30 days from the pool even being ready to even be filled. So a lot can change in 30 days. So that's why I say no decision can be made now. Um, you know, things could be better, things could be worse, but we've got we've got some time here to make a decision. We don't have to make it tonight. I think even with the even with the uh, leagues and the seasonal the the ball games and stuff, you know, like late term. Yeah, I don't, like you know, middle type or something. I don't know that much about it because yeah. I don't have any children that age. But yeah, we were, what Justin and I talked about Keisha with the the school was what they're doing is like is they're going to wait till. It, the beginning to middle of July before they allow camps and things like that. And we were going to, I talked to Justin about putting scenarios together for camps and clinics and things like that that the kids can participate in kind of around the July timeline of when Keisha is going to let the kids do stuff for the school as well. Okay. Um, I did talk to a, a mother today who said her kids, and I think that she's not the only one because she's talked to her friends. Um, their kids are angry. They're just upset and they're angry. Be, you know, they're it's depressing them because they don't have anything to look forward to for the summer. They're you know they've been ready for ball all year, mm -hmm. and so yes, definitely we need to yeah. think about their mental health as well as their physical health. You know, so. Anyway, so at this point, it sounds like the consensus is that we should sit back and wait. Does that sound right, everybody? Yes. Councilman Sigrist. Well, I think too, and uh, Councilman, uh, in two weeks, we'll have a lot more information. Uh, I think another interesting thing is that I understand Manhattan has already decided to close all of their pool. Um, and I've hear some other towns are working on that decision too. So that's something we may take into consideration in a couple of weeks. Yeah, they Manhattan has said, stated on it was on the news this evening. They are keep, they are closing their pool. They're not opening because they don't have the money to open. And yeah. you know, they've got financial. Well, Justin right. and Justin has a list of so far what's closing and what's um, considering closing. So Andale, Manhattan, Pittsburgh, Ottawa, Chase County, uh, many uh, Metro Kansas City pools are closed already. Mm -hmm. um, so while Migo is postponing their opening until July, if they get to open, I've talked to the rec director at Emporia. They're hoping to open by July, but they have so many cases of COVID, they don't actually see that being plausible. Um, Osage is on the fence. They're going to make a decision here in the next week or two of what they're going to do. Burlington, Hillsborough, and Salina, they're in the same boat. 
Computer says they're going to open June 18th if things stay the same as they are. They're not going to open them all at one time. Hey, so, what, what do we want to do about softball? Okay. So, well, I think we need probably, should we vote on this? Um, we, we, because we, we, I think it's, we're looking at two different things. We're looking at softball and we're looking at the pool. We're not, you know, they're not the same. And you guys can just recommend waiting on the pool and okay. not get a vote on that, but the softball okay. you would have to vote on. Is that okay with everybody to wait and just recommend waiting on the pool to put it off for a little bit? Is that without even voting on that? Is that okay with everybody? Yes. If anybody has a problem with that, speak now. Okay. All right. And how about softball? Because we're not going to have baseball, right? Correct. And, and you got teams pulling out of the league. So right. I, I think Justin's concern is that there's not going to be anybody to play. Um, but the trend is that teams are pulling out. Okay. Um, and then the sanitation portion of it, I. I've looked for sanitation stuff when he's talking to the suppliers. I talked to Nody at the school. He's he may have a couple of places we maybe get something. I talked to Kendra Good about it, and she said good luck um, because all those supplies are going to medical facilities. They have first yeah. dinner on all of it. Uh -huh. um, I do know just so that way it's clear is that the Abilene direct director that I visited with today not only about some baseball with the pool she visited with the baseball president who recommended that baseball be canceled here a little while ago and, and she asked him again today in person are you reconsidering your decision about pulling back your decision to cancel baseball and start something in he said no the board met, met we voted we're not going to have anything organized with baseball okay this summer so baseball is definitely baseball it, because of the softball's decision on sunday they thought maybe the baseball board would rethink their decision and they said no we've made the decision we're done okay uh, when does the, when does that softball season start june 15th june 15th and that's when uh the, the new phase for the governor has laid out will open up more of the country correct or the state Yes, mm -hmm. with but we also have to follow the guidelines of Dr. Freeze, and what he said is, whatever the CDC guidelines are and state guidelines are, we have to be able to show we can meet those before yeah. he will sign, well, off, sign off on allowing yeah. us to have. It was be on June fifteenth, right now. I think personally, I'm thinking next council meeting it, it's no different than the pool we'll probably have all the answers and things will be a lot more clear to us to make a decision on either one of them i hope so will that work for your schedule to the, put it off until the next meeting the only, thing, the only concern that i have is that in order to give the league an adequate opportunity to know how many teams we're going to have to have we would actually have to open up sign up and find out how many people are going to sign up and that type of thing um that was why it was going to be uh, my recommendation that we we let our community know because after the decision came out via facebook on sunday evening i've kind of held our community in the dark on what the rec department is planning on doing um so that was where i was hoping that we could have a decision to give to them this evening or tomorrow but Justin, you, we talked the other day that it, you, we, you, you said it was fairly easy to refund uh, registration through our, our uh, sign up, right? Correct. Yes, it is. But the issue, another issue is that we're going to let the girls play and not the boys then, right? Correct. That's not really us, it's the league, but yeah. <laughs> What'd you say? It's really the, the league. It's not really us. It's the association, the, the baseball association, the one that's actually canceled. So they've sort of taken that out of our hands. But yes, you're right. And I mean, the girls would have the opportunity to play and the boys would not if we did that. Yeah. So. I don't know how we can try to reinvent the wheel that everybody else is bailing out. I think we probably take the line that 
follow an error on the side of caution, but that's just my personal opinion. I won't support it. So. Anybody else have anything? To... I guess maybe we should. Should we vote on this? We probably should. I think no, if you're going to vote on anything, whether you open sign up or not. Yeah, whether we open sign up. I mean, put open sign up. So much you're telling people in the community we're having to stop but then there needs to be an understanding that you may not get to have salt. That it might be might be possibly be canceled. So you're giving yeah. hope by why and also not giving them hope. So I, I mean, it, it's a kind of a catch twenty two. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. I get where Justin's coming on it because he's the one that's going to end up having to do all the work. Yeah. Well, not the work part of it, but having all the conversations with the parents. Yeah. Because he's going to get phone calls one way or the other. I mean, it should be an understanding that depending on what happens, you're going to have a softball season. So, how many kids do we we'll sign up for softball? Uh, I can say based on teams, um, we'll have probably two eight and under, which is coach pitch, probably two ten and under, two twelve and under, and then an eighteen and under and a sixteen and under, so about eight teams. Okay. But again, that's you know contingent upon. I don't know how sign up's going to go with everything going on because I don't know the kind of the pulse of the community if they're nervous about traveling to Abilene or Chapman or something like that or Justin sure. City. So. Sure. And I know hey. that. Councilman Brooks had mentioned to you that possibly we could do, you know, maybe June, starting June the 30th or something, start having some, uh, just some games, you yes, know, just absolutely. inviting different teams and that's having what, games. And that's what we talked about. He's talking to Chapman and uh, Abilene about having discrimination. Mm -hmm. so, so that they that's, have something to look right. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so there's, that's why I told Justin, put scenarios in place where we can try to have something in July. Yeah, in lieu of, which is not actual, but they might have just as much fun. I'm sure they would. Just a little later, a little hotter. <laughs> you know, that was is, 30. is that baseball as well as softball? Yes. yes. The, yeah, the contingency plan is for both genders, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Justin, can I do a question? Yes, you sir. Are you there? Yes. yes. Okay, hey, whose phone's calling? <laughs> Sorry. Justin? Yes, sir. Uh, what what are the parents telling you? What what is the consensus that you're hearing from parents? Are they wanting to are you have a season or not have a season? I missed part of it. Are, do, are the parents telling? What are the parents telling? Are they parents telling yes or no? The girls, I, I probably from the girls, I'll, I'll go both sides. The girls' side, I'm hearing about 50 50. That 50% 50 of them, they want to play because there's some, you know, some really diehard parents that want to play softball and they really don't care where they go or the risks. I have another 50% of the parents that I'm hearing from that are really nervous because we do travel to downtown Junction City, we do travel to Chapman, we do travel to downtown Avenue. The baseball side of parents, the majority that I'm hearing from are just extremely upset because the girls get softball and they get, at this point, unless I develop something, they're getting nothing and they're upset because there's not gender equity. So that's kind of the, what I'm hearing. Yeah. I think, I think it's a, a lose-lose situation here. I don't, I think we're going to have upset parents no matter what we do. Yeah, maybe we can. I, I agree with you. I think if we give them that uh, assurance that we are going to work. definitely work on having something, you know, once these phases are lifted, you know, when we phase out that, you know, we, we and there should be no problem finding that all kids are going to want something to do. So, you know, I think if we would give them that assurance to say, although it's Different this year, there is going to be something that's probably that's probably area on you know side of caution, and that gives ever everybody a a little bit of hope for the future here. The kids can you know then the kids can yeah. I right. like just to say um, I have put a lot of thought into um, what what would that actually look like, and every single young baseball and softball player likes to be instructed by someone that has a ton of skill or a ton of experience and i've already um i've already lined out um three or four college softball players 
in the event that we do not have a season that would come here and instruct the young ladies. Um, I know Coach uh, Matt Wilkins, he has a ton of contacts playing at Washburn. I think he would probably be able to get a ton of people to come down, probably some current college baseball players. Dustin San Romani actually was from the Eudora era, and I Eudora area. I know he still has contacts with the University of Kansas. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a possibility that we could get some really uh, cool opportunities in a really you know, rough time for these kids. And I would do everything I possibly could if you guys decide not to do it to give them something that they've never really truly had before. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have a system, but they also have an opportunity to, to be coached and taught and get to play some games and stuff with some, some pretty bunch of people. That'd be, that'd be fine. That'd be exciting for them. So, is that okay with everybody then? Well, what are we doing with the softball? Just putting it off for two weeks? We have to. We have to decide. We need to decide tonight whether we're going to have okay. a sign up or, or not. So, let's let let's. I think we're going to have to go down and get a consensus. I don't know if we need to vote on it, but we need to see where everybody's at. I think you'll have to vote. I mean, let's just vote on it. Let's vote on it. If you're, if you're basically mm -hmm. canceling uh, softball season, which you have to do. Okay, the question will be then well, should we have a motion then or should we just vote on it? I think you have to have a motion. Okay. Um, somebody to cancel on baseball season and work on contingency plans for July. Okay. So I need a motion. Yes or no, whether you think we should plan to have softball season or wait and work on a condition plan for July. Anybody willing to do that? I'll make the motion that we cancel the baseball season and explore other options when this uh, phases out. You mean softball, right? Softball. Do I, I second. Second? Okay, sure. Okay, we'll go down the list. Keith West. Yes. Okay. Uh, Larry Segrist. Yes. Mark Berner. Reluctantly, yes. Okay. Uh, Sharon Hahn. <laughs> yes, if there's a reluctant, I agree, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Brooks. No, I think we should go ahead and have sign-ups and then we could cancel later. My vote is no. Okay. Chris Thomas. Yes. Okay. Motion carries five to one. Okay. So uh, it would be good if we could get that out into the paper and on the website as soon as possible. Um, Justin's going to type something up. Listen, I'll yeah. look at it. Um, before we post it tonight, and then I can get it to Marcus tomorrow morning. Is Marcus here? Marcus, Marcus you're on? Yep. Okay. Good. There you go. We'll get yeah. So, so they know. Uh, and Mark. We, uh, you know, if anybody has parents, call them, explain to them that was a heart wrenching decision because it is, you know, to, to do that. Okay. Um, moving on. We're going to go to governing body comments. I'm going to start with Mayor. Chris Thomas. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. I just had one more comment on baseball before we moved on. Um, I do agree with Mark Brooks's idea that we should plan for the future. And I would like to see um, Justin go ahead and put together um, a plan of action for, you know, moving forward with baseball and softball or one or the other, whatever we need to do. If, if we're able to do so in the future. For July, okay. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I think he was planning on that. Yep. So. It's, it's that's that's what me and him have discussed, Mark, is, is working on something for July for both groups. Yeah, I know we, we just, I heard the discussion on it. I just want to make sure we're still doing that as well as, because uh, what Keith's motion was, was that look at it, you know, down the road here, if we can. And so I'd like to be prepared because I think mean, Mark uh, Councilman Brooks had a very good comment about being prepared. Yep. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right. 
Now on the governing body, we're going to start with Chris Thomas. Thank you, Mayor. So um, I just wanted to uh, share a couple of things with everyone. It was uh, a tough decision, but I'm resigning from the council. Hannah and I and the boys are relocating back to Kansas City. Um, going to probably move in June, put the house on the market here in a couple of weeks. So um, sad to leave. And, um, you know, it's a great group to work with here, but I got to do what's best for the family. We're going back to the city. Okay. We, we aren't sure we're going to accept that, but yeah, <laughs> if we're going to miss you, you will be greatly missed. <laughs> well, I, hate, I hate to hear that, Chris, but um, you have to do what's right for your family. I understand. I well, we'll miss you. Well, Thank you. Yes, yes. And if there's anything that you need at all, be sure and let us know. And your resignation is as of June 1st, correct? Yeah, I'll sit in. I think there's probably still another meeting here in May, so that would be right. It. Right, so we will have, okay. Yep. All right, anything else, Chris? No, I think that's it. Okay, um, next we're gonna go with Mark Brooks. No, I don't think I have anything tonight. I just wish everybody to stay safe and, and we're gonna get out of this thing. We, we, need, to, we need to look forward and, and it'll be all right. Okay, thank you. Sharon Hahn? Well, um, sorry to hear that, Chris. We're going to miss you. Um, I was looking forward to um, your great contribution to the city council. So, but wish you and your family well in the big city, and you'll have to stay safe there. So, um, thank you. <laughs> uh, we had some hard decisions tonight, and um, it's really difficult because we know the kids look forward to these summer activities and um, and it's been hard on them as we all know since they've been out of school and have lost that connection too so um, I just think we we my personal feeling is we have to continue to try to look at what's best and what keeps us safe in the long run and we have such uncertainty right now that um, it's better to err on the side of caution so Anyway, uh, that's all I have. Just stay safe. Okay, thank you. Um, now we're ready for Mark Brooks. Oh, wait, we just had Mark Brooks. What am I doing? Going the wrong direction here. Uh, Mark Brooks. I don't have anything tonight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Larry Seagrip. I have nothing this evening either. Okay, and Keith Wessel. Oh, you're muted, Keith. I'm sorry, I didn't. I wasn't on. You hear me? That's, yeah, now we can. Okay. Uh, I want to uh, echo Sharon's concerns. This was a tough meeting. It's tough decisions. They're hard to make, but I think I applaud the council for erring on the side of caution. Um, I want to thank everybody, everybody involved in the city for adjusting and making sure that we are still available and getting the essentials completed and and able to keep business going and a big shout out and a thank you to all the city employees because they all made sacrifices and made themselves uh, adapt so that we could uh, continue to serve everybody's needs so good job everybody stay safe and thanks and we'll look forward to the next round okay Chris, we'll miss you, and I wish you the best to you and your family in the city. Thank you. Steve Iverson? No, I just wanted to uh, wish Chris and his family the best and, and hope uh, all the great things come to them. Um, I have uh, nothing else to add at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, Nick? Kind of an update on the testing out at the city lake with the blue green algae. Um, we dropped off samples, uh, and I think what week it is last week into last week and got the results back. We are still in a watch, we don't have enough to consider that we have blue green algae. We're still in the watch, we're not in a warning, so that's that's good news. Um, 
And then Chris, we wish you luck and hopefully we'll see you around. You'll come back for Washunga days and stuff like that. Absolutely. Okay. Is that all? That's it. Okay. Um, I'm last. Um, first of all, Chris, please accept our condolences on your mom. She was a wonderful woman. She was really an important part of our city council. She helped me. She was on council when I was here. And one of the first people I, I sat by her at each meeting, at my first meetings, and she was very encouraging and taught me a lot. So, uh, great woman. We, we, we will miss her. We will very much miss Thank her. You. Yes. And we will miss you as well. Um, I agree with everybody else. I reiterate what they say. We're going to miss having you here. You've already been a good uh, councilman and uh, had a lot of a lot of good insight. And so don't be surprised if one day we call you. <laughs> so. I, I welcome the call. Thank you guys yeah. for all the kind words. Um, the other thing um, is, um, as we open up um, our city a little bit here, you know, um, the, hope we can all stay in a positive attitude and, you know, be careful, still do our distancing. I think we're doing really well. The weather helps a lot. The, the sun's coming out and we're starting to get a little bit more positive feelings. I see people are out moving around a little bit more. Uh, the restaurants all tell me that they're really busy and that's good. And the grocery store is having a hard time. They were out of bananas yesterday. So I know they're, they're, they're busy. Um, so please remember to shop local, everybody, and uh, support our little businesses and, and our uh, shops and things in town, our restaurants. So anyway, that being said, I have oh, one more thing. Oh, wait a minute. It's got one more thing. The mayor and I talked to, I talked to Deborah Anderson today, um, and the mayor and I agreed to let them do farm, the farmer's markets over there by the Carnegie Saturday. It's going to be a drive up. They're going to have masks and gloves on and things like that. Um, so they're planning on doing that Saturday. Deborah's going to put an announcement in the paper. Yes. So if you need any tea towels or avocados or fresh corn, that's a place to go. <laughs> okay. Anything else? You're okay, Nick? Yep. I'm Things good. are going okay here in City Hall, right? Okay. Good. Okay. That being said, I'll, I'll enter, accept a motion to do majored. Adjourned. Majored. So moved, Mayor. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second, Keith. Okay. All those in favor? Just say aye. 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 Okay. Very good. I appreciate it. Thank you.